Hi guys, welcome to another Exploration Saturday here at the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center. Happy spring, today is the official first day of spring and we are very excited. Outside here we have a lot of trees starting to bloom, cottonwood trees have little buds growing on them. Some of our plants are starting to sprout, so we're very excited to see some fresh colors around the building here. And so today we are going to talk about some different colors on the Lewis and Clark Trail and we're going to talk about how you can make some tie-dye with some natural plants and that you might have in your kitchen right now. Some plants, some fruits, some berries and how you can use those items to create color. You can create pigment. Now have you ever wondered where does color come from? You're in school, you're looking at your textbook and you see them in their uniforms. They have these blue jackets with the red lining. Maybe they're wearing some blue socks. Maybe you're looking at some old paintings of George Washington at a ball and all the ladies are wearing these beautiful pink dresses and the men are dressed in greens and blues. How do they get that color? Because 200 years ago, there wasn't any chemical process to create color. Everything you wear today, usually, right now I'm not wearing very much color, but right now look at what you're wearing. Do you have pink on your shirt? Do you have green? Do you have blue, purple, yellow, neon orange, neon green? None of those colors would be possible 200 years ago because today all our colors are usually synthetic, which just means they're made in a factory using different chemicals to get the exact color that we want. You go to a paint store and you picked out some sky blue blue for your new bedroom color that was chemical, chemically produced so that all sky blue blues look the exact same. But 200 years ago, they didn't have any of that synthetic dyes, those synthetic colors. All their colors were made naturally from plants, even from animals, even from rocks. They just had to use what they had around them, which also meant a lot of their colors would vary. You might stand two soldiers in the exact same uniform side by side, and they're wearing some gray uniforms and they might be different shades because it depends on the fabric that was used to dye on. And it depends, you know, it's nature. Nothing's perfect, nothing's the same. So you might use maybe some walnuts to create the color gray. And it's gonna vary in that pot of walnuts when you're trying to um, grab that color, grab that pigment from the walnuts. It's gonna be different when you dye the fabric because it's mother nature and everything's a little bit varied. So with Lewis and Clark, if you ever visit us, you'll see these really big murals with the men in their uniforms. They might be wearing these gray coat tees, these gray jackets. You'll see the captains in their military uniforms, their blue jackets with red. Clark has gold buttons and gold thread sewn into his uniform. Lewis has uh, silver buttons on his. So you'll see some different colors and how those colors were made. It just depended on how much money you had. So you really want some, if you wanted those deep rich colors, they would cost a little bit more because those colors would often have to come from overseas. The different items they used to make those colors had to be shipped in from overseas. So it costs to have shipping. If you ever have things shipped from Amazon or any online shopping, shipping and handling can be expensive. And oftentimes, just make a little ounce of color often took lots and lots of ingredients. Uh, you would need a whole bunch of indigo from India to create a deep, rich, bluish purple color. You would need a lot of indigo. If you have to buy a lot of indigo, your prices go up. So oftentimes, people who'd wear these rich, deep colors, you had to have to have a lot of money to afford that. And wearing that color was also like a sign of wealth because you could obviously afford it, which a lot left a lot of people without a lot of these different colors because they just couldn't afford it. For example, if you wanted to make kind of a dark red, back then it was called a Spanish brown, you would mix up some buttermilk and brick dust. Mix it together, dye your fabric, and you have a Spanish brown, kind of a darker red. 
perhaps if you wanted that blue or purple, you would use indigo that had to be shipped from India. If you wanted a deep red scarlet, they would actually have little bugs that they would use from Central America or Mexico that they would use to make that scarlet red. I feel a little bad for all the little bugs that had to sacrifice their lives to make that red. And even if you wanted this purple, have you ever uh, watched any movies about princesses and queens and kings and they say purple is the sign of royalty? That is because it was a huge expense to have purple fabric because purple was made by using mollusk shells. So those little seed creatures, little, little shells. And it took a whole bunch of those shells to make purple. And so you can just see, like, depending on the item you're using, will vary um, on your cost. So I want you today, we're gonna learn how to make our own color pigment, our own dye from things we might have lying around in our kitchen or even outside. It's spring, go outside, grab some bark, grab some rocks, grab some berries. But remember to always check with mom and dad before you grab anything, because you never know, different things, different plants, sometimes the leaves, the berries, the stems, the roots can be poisonous. So don't put anything in your mouth and always check in with mom and dad. And so I went to our kitchen, and you can see here to the side of me, I decided to grab some spinach, some red cabbage, beets, turmeric, which is like a spice, you'll find that in your spice drawer. I used some blueberries, yellow onions, and I decided to buy dye some fabric. And it's a really easy process. After this little video, you'll I'll add on a little informational video about how to create your own dye. But basically what you need is some little uh, tablecloths, 100% cotton. Because remember, it depends on the fabric you're using. You want that color pigment to attach to your fabric. So linen or cotton, that will help that color soak in. And we're gonna pre-treat it in some boiling hot water with vinegar. Vin vinegar is like a mordant. If you ever dye fabric or you know someone who works in the clothing industry, mordant is like a chemical that helps the color from your plant attach to your cloth. So I decided to use vinegar as my glue to help that color stick better to my fabric. Vinegar, salt, copper, tin, uh, cream of tartar, and alum. Those are all mordants. They kind of act like a glue for your fabric. So you're gonna pre-treat this. You're gonna add it to hot water and vinegar, let it boil. Remember to ask help from mom and dad. Then after that's done, you're gonna set that aside. You're gonna grab whatever kind of vegetables or fruits are inside your kitchen. Let's say you have some onions, and I don't like onions, so I decided to use those up. You take some onion peelings, you're gonna boil that in some water and vinegar for about an hour. It's gonna simmer on low for one hour. Then you're gonna add your cloth. You're gonna let that stir around a little bit. And then when you pull it out really carefully, it's gonna be hot, you wring out the extra moisture, you're gonna have this really pretty yellow color on your tablecloth. And this time for my tablecloths, my dish towels, I just did single colors for each one. But I think next time I do it, I'm gonna try a little bit more tie dye. I'm gonna create that dye from you know, uh, yellow onions, from the beets, from the blueberries. I'm gonna make little dishes of each little dye, and then I'm gonna tie dye. So I'm gonna add that dye to the cloth in different places, like if you were tie dyeing. And it'd be interesting to see what kind of, what that would do to my dishcloth right here. But super easy process. We have the instructions in the activity sheets below here on Facebook. And there's gonna be a little video of me making some blueberry dye on the cloth here you see in the corner. Blueberry made a really pretty purple color. But be, feel free to try different fruits, different vegetables, because sometimes it doesn't turn out like you think. I grabbed some spinach and my spinach, I was thinking it was gonna be a nice dark green color. Turns out making natural green, it's kind of hard to do. It actually turned out to be a pretty pale yellow. That did not go how I expected it to. My red, red cabbage didn't do red. It did pale purple, which I thought was still really pretty. And then turmeric did a really deep yellow color. So some of these things didn't go as I first thought they were. And feel free to try different ones, like an orange. Do you think it would make an orange color, an orange pigment? 
or will it be yellow or could it be red? You never know, it all depends. Mother Nature is a little, can be a little um, unexpected of what colors she will produce. So feel free to jump into the kitchen, grab some vegetables with your parents' permission and give it a go. So guys, we are gonna go hop over to our kitchen right now and we're gonna go ahead and whip up some blueberries and see how the whole process comes together. And before I forget one more thing, while Lewis and Clark were on the trail and they're traveling, they had purchased all these clothing beforehand, but they also saw what the native people were wearing. And the native people were using a very similar process like the Americans, using the things they had in their environment. So, you know, the plants that were growing, the berries. Lewis and Clark might have seen a winter count, which I have right here. It's on animal hide, so animal skin, and there's black and red dye that's been used to create pictures of different stories of different historical moments within in the Native American history for that tribe. They also describe seeing porcupine quills. I'll hold it up to the camera over here. And the porcupine quills were used kind of like beads to decorate different clothing items, maybe the shoes, the moccasins. And the porcupine quills have been dyed in plant dye or fruit dye, and then it's sewn into the animal hide to make these really pretty designs. So Lewis and Clark are just learning everything they can while they're traveling, including what colors do the native people use to make their clothing and how do they make it? So they were always learning, always exploring, which is something I always encourage you guys to do.